Hello there. Today we are going to talk a little about the special survival tricks that butterflies, moths and their caterpillars display in order so they don't get eaten by a predator. Can you remember what a predator is? Well, it's an animal that eats another animal. Have a think and see if you can decide who might be a predator of this beautiful elephant hawk moth. Well, predator number one for night flying moths are the bats here. Moths make up the majority of a bat's diet, but they can also end up being eaten by frogs, toads and lizards. And small birds rely on caterpillars and other small grubs to feed their young. They need to find about 400 caterpillars and grubs a day to feed their chicks. So if the birds and the bats are predators, what is the name we give to the animals that are being eaten? They are called the prey animals. So our caterpillars, moths and butterflies are what we call prey. So let's look how these prey animals avoid getting eaten. Now, if you remember, butterflies and moths can look very different depending on where they are within their life cycle. We all know what the adults look like with wings and long antennae. But how do all moths and butterflies start out life? Can you remember? What is it that the female adults lay? Well, it's the eggs. These are maybe laid either singly on different plants or a mass of them um, all together, like here. What comes next in the life cycle? Well, it's the caterpillar or the feeding machine, if you like. Um, the caterpillars eat and eat and grow and grow until they can grow no further. And then they become a chrysalis. A lot of change occurs within the chrysalis until eventually the adult moth or butterfly emerges. At each stage of life, the animal is well adapted to survive. And we're going to now look at how each life stage is able to avoid getting eaten. So let's start with the eggs. There are advantages and disadvantages for either being laid singly, such as in this photo, or as a big mass. The egg is much harder to find by a predator if it is by itself. However, if you are in a big group of eggs, like this next slide, each egg has security by being part of a bigger group. Eggs are normally laid in a hidden away place by the adult female, such as under a leaf, for example, and this helps keep the eggs safe from predators. The female also produces a special glue-like chemical at the same time she is laying her eggs, so that they can safely stick to the leaves. Next come the caterpillars. These have to avoid getting caught by birds and other predators. Regardless of the type of caterpillar, they all have a special power. They can stick to leaves. But how do they do this? Well, first of all, can you find this caterpillar's legs? Have a look and see. Now, if you pointed to here, you would be right. Now, remember, insects only have six legs, three on either side. So here we can see three. But you might have thought that these here were their legs. These, in fact, are that special power that I was talking about. These are called their prolegs. And these help the caterpillar to move around, but they also help them to stick to the leaf. And this helps them to hide on the underside of leaves without falling off. So they act a little like suction cups. So this is one way that caterpillars avoid predators. 
But once they become an adult, though, they lose these prolegs. So can you spot the caterpillar here? This caterpillar is using another trick to avoid getting eaten. Can you think what that might be? It's called camouflage. This is where an animal is able to blend with its surroundings. And here, the caterpillar is almost perfectly the same color as the leaf, even down to the yellow and brown flecks on its body, which look like the old damaged sides of the leaf. Can you see the head of the caterpillar here? Have a cl close look and see. Well done if you got it right. So it's hidden right under the leaf there. Here you can also see that the caterpillar is using their pro legs to grip onto the underneath of the leaf. Can you count how many pro legs this caterpillar has? So we've got one here. Another one here, three, four, and then this one right at the back as well. So we've got five on one side, so how many would the, ha the caterpillar have in total? So what about here? Can you spot our caterpillar? Have a close look. Right, so, did you find it? If you look carefully, hiding under this quite hairy little leaf is a hairy little caterpillar with a white stripe along its side. So yes, this caterpillar is also using camouflage to hide itself. Let's see if you can find the caterpillar now. Have a close look. Right. Did you think the caterpillar was here? Well, if you did, I'm afraid you were wrong because this is a flower bud. So try again and have another close look and see if you can find our caterpillar. So, do you think this is the caterpillar? Well, you'd be right. So the caterpillar here is not, cat is not camouflaged like a leaf, but instead it's camouflaged to look like a twig. That's pretty clever. Now let's have a close look at our caterpillar. Can you see which is the head end of our caterpillar? Again, have a close look. Is the head at this end? Do you think that's the head? Now, if you thought that was the head, well done, because you can just about make out the head and three of its legs. And if you think about it, the head is the end that does the eating. So it's nearest the leaf and it's obviously the leaf that it'll be eating. So what's at the other end of our caterpillar? If we go to this end, can you make out those pro legs that we were talking about? And they are helping our caterpillar to stay attached um, to the stem. This caterpillar looks completely different. Is it using camouflage, do you think? The caterpillar is really colorful and standing out from the leaf, which is completely the reverse of camouflage. It has bright colors such as red and yellow on it. Now in nature, these colors, when seen with black, are warning colours. 
warning predators away. In many cases, there is a good reason for warning off the predator, other than the fact that the caterpillar doesn't want to get eaten. Here, the hairs of the caterpillar are a really good defence. They would make the caterpillar very nasty and unpalatable for a bird to eat. Sometimes caterpillars and other animals use the bold warning colours to warn off predators because the caterpillar is poisonous to eat. If we take this caterpillar, for instance, the caterpillar of the cinnabar moth, this uses the bold yellow and black stripes to warn off predators because it is poisonous and would be very distasteful to eat. The caterpillar gets the poison in its body from the poisonous plant that it eats, the yellow flowered ragwort. And this is what the caterpillar turns into, a beautiful red and black cinnabar moth. This is one of our day flying moths. The poison remains in the adult and the adult uses black and red now to ward off the predators. The cinnabar moth gets its name from the mineral cinnabar shown here, which is a lovely red colour. However, it is also very toxic and is the mineral that the substance mercury is extracted from. Once the caterpillar turns into a chrysalis or cocoon, the animal has to rely on camouflage to protect itself as it won't be able to move for some time. Can you see how this butterfly chrysalis looks like a curled leaf? The caterpillar makes the silk thread to help keep the chrysalis attached to the stem of the plant. This cocoon has been made from pieces of bark in order to look like part of the stem and so become camouflaged. Here we're looking at an adult butterfly. Can you spot it? It is wonderfully camouflaged against this backdrop of black and white. The butterfly has its wings closed, but it's quite a different matter if the adult butterfly opens its wings. Then it becomes quite startling and bold. This is a male orange tip butterfly. Only the males have the orange tips to their wings and the females are all white. So if the camouflage doesn't work and a predator gets too close to an adult butterfly or moth, they have another trick up their sleeve. They can ward off predators by flashing their brightly coloured wings. And if that isn't enough, their last resort would be to fly away. Of course, these colours and patterns on their wings are also used for other reasons, such as to attract a mate. Can you see this camouflage butterfly? Now look what happens when this one gets disturbed. It can startle the predators with these flashy colours and their eye spots. This is the peacock butterfly and their eye spots fool the predator into thinking this is a much bigger animal than the butterfly really is. But it's not just butterflies that can do this. Adult moths can too. They can hide their lower wings with their top wings, as this moth is doing in the photo. It looks like they only have two wings, but the bottom wings are hidden beneath. This way they look camouflaged and not seen by the predator. But they can startle the predator if they get too close by moving the top wings to reveal these big eye spots below. And can you spot this moth? This is a type of swordgrass moth and look how it takes on the form of a piece of wood. Have you got it yet? So here it is, we go round, coming up to its head now and then right hand side of its other wing. Just as this one looks like a piece of wood, there are other butterflies and moths that can also look like dead leaves. Other moths might blend in with the lichens on a tree, like this Marvel de Jour moth, which is a lovely soft green colour. Can you see it here?
There we go. This oak beauty moth is blending in beautifully with the grey lichens on this tree. If it flattened its wings more, I think it would be even harder to see. Have you found it? Congratulations if you have. There's its head and its two wings are there. And this is probably the most difficult to spot, blending in with the bark on this tree. I'll give you a clue. This moth is in the bottom right hand corner of this slide. Have you got it yet? Well, it is really difficult. Um, the outline of its wings are quite wavy. This is its left wing now. And now we're coming to its little head. And then we're going down the right hand side of its wing and it's wavy bottom of its wing there. And so you can sort of see its body in the middle. So you see some moths are the complete masters of disguise and are able to hide in full view of their predator, just like an invisibility cloak. So each stage of the life cycle, butterflies and moths have clever ways to avoid being eaten by predators. So have a think now, how many of these different tricks can you remember? Well, I do hope that you got the first one and that is camouflage. But did you remember those irritating hairs on that caterpillar? the vapor and moth caterpillar. How about warning colors? Did you remember all those bright warning colors um, of the cinnabar moth caterpillar and the cinnabar moth itself, the adult? How about ah, hiding under leaves? So those eggs that you might find hiding under leaves or in fact um, the caterpillar or even the adult. Ah, the sticky pro legs that enable the caterpillar to stay on to the underside of the leaves. And some of them are poisonous. Again, the cinnabar moth, for example. And then we had the eye spots, didn't we, of the peacock butterfly and then the other moth, the eyed hawk moth. And they kind of give a mistaken identity, sort of showing that the animal might be bigger than it really is. And then last but not least, of course, when they become an adult, the last thing they can do if the predator is very close to them is they can use their wings and fly away. You can have a go at our survival tricks quiz We'll have fun doing the word search related to this presentation. Just download these supporting learning materials on the Butterfly Conservation Education pages at this link. If you want to find out more about butterflies, moths and their caterpillars, do visit our websites at these links here. You'll find a link to some fun activities to do and you can record butterflies that you see in your garden all year round by downloading the iRecord Butterflies app from the Butterfly Conservation website. You can view a large range of videos on our YouTube channel. And don't forget, we are on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for listening to this presentation. I hope you enjoy discovering the butterflies, moths and caterpillars that are visiting your garden this spring and summer. And remember, they may be hiding, so have a look at that twig and check under those leaves, you'll be surprised at what you might find.